Hello, my name is Riley Blackwell. I'm a caver from Virginia. Um, and just to tell you a little bit about myself, I started caving in 2016, October 2016, with the VPI Cave Club. Um, since then, I've lived in Alabama and Tennessee, caved a lot in TAG, and also in Mexico, Montana, Utah, and a couple of other places. Um, I'm going to present today about the revival of the Newberry Baines project. So I got help with this presentation from Eric Hahn, Philip Moneyhun, and Ed Devine, all of whom are also VPI Cave Club members. Um, Philip Moneyhun is the other person kind of pushing hard on this project. So a little bit of background, Newberry Baines is in an area called Skydusky Hollow in Bland County, Virginia. Um, it's a fairly significant area for caving. Um, and it's kind of, I have referred to it before as the ancestral home of the VPI Cave Club. So we hold a lot of events there. Um, many of the caves are owned by VPI Cave Club members. All of the surveys I believe were conducted by VPI groups um, with lots of help from other people, of course. There are more than 25 miles of cave in the area, including Coon Cave, Paul Penley's, Buddy Penley's, Spring Hollow, Bain Spring, and Newberry Bains. Um, I've included some statistics here. You can see they're all significant caves. Many of them are over 300 feet deep. Um, there are a lot of pits that are more than 100 feet, if you care about that, including two 200 footers in the valley. Um, the one I'm going to talk about today is Newberry Baines, which is 6.6 .6 miles long um, and 380 feet deep and has a, quite a few pits in it. This is not Newberry Baines, but it is a really pretty picture from inside Skydusky Hollow. Um, just to give you some context, there's a lot of really cool stuff here. So here's the hollow um, with all the different line, flat, line plots as of February 2017. So this does not include um, anything found since then. Um, but you can see the different caves. Newberries is this one, this black one in the middle. Um, and there's a Newberry's entrance over here and a Baines entrance further north. Um, the two closest caves to Newberry Baines are Buddy Penley's and Baines Springs. Um, there's also Spring Hollow and Paul Penley's, um, Paul Penley system, and then Coon Cave all the way over here. And I believe all of these caves drain to Burnt House Spring, so they are all hydrologically connected, which is very interesting. And like I said, um, survey has been going on here for a long time. Um, Bill Cuddington actually used to come to Newberry's um, to do some of his first vertical experiments. So Newberry's in particular is a very historic cave. Um, and this is a, a place with a lot of rich history and involvement for many generations of cavers. Here is a profile view uh, with three times vertical exaggeration so that you can kind of get past the spaghetti a little bit. Um, so again, Newberry Baines is this one in the middle, blue this time. Um, Buddy Penley's, which is relevant to this project, is the purple one behind it. And you can see uh, there's a number of pits and domes in Newberry's, all of which are very cool and interesting. Um, there's kind of a network of horizontal passages on top and then several different parallel pits, all of which drop to this lower level. At the middle of the cave, there's something called the vault room from which passages extend um, in many different directions. One of those passages is called the main subway, and that's this horizontal thing coming out to the left. Um, and at the very end of the main subway, there are a number of domes, and that's where we're gonna go. So in September 2017, um, Joe Zokaitis, who is one of the people who led the original survey of the cave with his wife, Carol Zokaitis, took me and Philip Moneyhun back to the end of the main subway. So it's a, a large borehole. Um, it has a couple crawling spots, but it's mostly just great big booming walking passage. It has good air in it and it ends in a breakdown choke. Um, so just above, just before that breakdown choke, there's a side passage with some interesting domes that had never been climbed. And I think only a few people, um, including Ray Syrah, had ever been back there. Joe no longer fit um, into, there, there's quite a tight breakdown contortion uh, that you have to do to get to this area, um, and Joe doesn't fit anymore. So Philip and I did some reconnaissance on the domes by ourselves, um, there's three of them, and decided that they were definitely worth visiting again. 
this area was so interesting to us. Well, first of all, because Joe said it was interesting um, and we trusted him, but uh, more specifically, it had the potential to bypass that breakdown choke at the end of the subway and continue this booming borehole. And then it's also very close to Buddy Penley's. Um, and we were also interested just in doing work in Newberries in general because it's a really big, beautiful cave. It has interesting pits in it um, and it's important to the VPI Cave Club. So we were excited about getting to work in there. Here's some old pictures of Bill's Rappel on the left and Triple Wells on the right, both by Chip Clark, who's a famous VPI Cave Club photographer. Um, these photos are courtesy of Richard Cobb and Ed Devine. So the second trip is uh, what we call in technical terms, a shit show. Um, Philip and Lee White and I went back in May, 2018. Uh, to do one of those 40 foot aid climbs. Uh, and this was super slick. Philip climbed it really fast, seemed really safe. Everything went well. Um, Lee belayed and I shivered in the corner. Um, and yeah, that part was great. He checked the top and said that there was nothing there. Um, I went up to the top of the climb just to kind of get an impression and found that there was something there and it had air coming out of it. Um, so I kind of dug through a series of chocks um, vertically, moved a lot of rock, um, ended up dropping quite a large rock on a hammer drill that had been left in the fall zone below, unfortunately. Um, Philip had had a bobbin fail, and then um, after I moved all these rocks, slithered up through this hole above this 40-foot pit, I found that my bobbin had unclipped itself from my harness, which is the only time this has ever happened to me, um, fallen to the floor, and uh, had abandoned me right as I was about to have to repel um, in a very precarious situation. So Lee passed me a bobbin. I made it down alive, but absolutely terrified. Philip went up to look at it um, and then had some bolting issues, set a bolt and then pulled it out by hand, which is a bad sign um, by anyone's terms. Um, he had previously said that this anchor was way better than the anchors he usually set. Um, and then paid for that by having to spend some time clipped into one bolt at the top of this 40 foot climb, trying to find any rock that was good enough to put bolts in. Um, so it was really sketchy. It was, it was one of the sketchier processes, all factors combined I've ever had to do. Um, we really scared the shit out of Lee. Uh, <laughs> he didn't like it at all and all the shale and, uh, told us thanks for the trip guys, but I'm never caving in Virginia again. Tag is the home for me. Um, and so after we had all survived and set decent bolts and reunited ourselves with our bobbins, uh, no one had been to the top of the climb except for me. Um, and what was at the top of the climb was walking passage with great air. Um, so we were very excited about that, but we didn't have any more energy to look at it that day. In July, 2018, um, two months later, Philip and I went back with Jake Lieber, Eric Hahn and Andrew Schoenwolf. Um, Eric and Andrew are also VPI Cave Club cavers. We did two trips, each in the vicinity of 14 hours, and surveyed about 1,100 feet. Um, in the middle, we did a rest day and uh, took a photo trip to another cave. During these trips, we found a 125-foot pit, uh, quite large in diameter, which we named the gold because of its color um, and also in reference to a number of things that a number of us care about. Here's a picture of me doing the first descent of that. Um, Jake did a really great job taking this picture, and he did an especially great job because he wanted to photograph the actual first descent, um, and I was really raring to go at the moment this photo was taken. So I think I told him something like, you have 27 seconds, um, and he handed me a flash bulb, and I fired it off, and I, I said, you get one take, and I'm not stopping or messing around anymore at all. There's a big virgin pig here. Um, so this is his, his first shot, uh, one setup. So I thought that was really impressive. Uh, that's what you want your project photographers to be able to do, right? Not get in the way. Here's another really great picture that Jake took of Philip, um, different view of the pit. You can see why we named it this. Uh, it has this really weird yellow color, which looks even yellower, I think, in person. So here's the profile view of our new survey. Um, that's not all our survey in the red box to the left. The main subway is this big long thing in blue. 
And then our survey starts um, at the end here. And it you can see this pit dropping down is the gold. Um, and then there's these long crawls going off up top. Uh, and this isn't quite an updated view, but that, that's the data from 2018. Here's the plan view from 2018. So there's the main subway. And then you can see our domes over here and all the new passage. And then this set of crawls coming in. And these are all wet. Um, th these are canyons that kind of retreat upwards and then turn into wet crawls. You can see, interestingly, that they are heading for buddies, um, which we didn't know at the time that we were in the passage exactly, but we were very excited to find out when we got out of the cave and looked at the data. So then after this great, um, this great survey effort, we began to have some problems. In April 2019, Philip attempted to go and was stopped by a perched sump. Um, and what we've concluded with the help of some geology friends is that logging above the cave has made uh, the water flash a lot faster. So there's this, that big low level room I mentioned uh, now overflows into the main subway, which it probably did before, but it's now doing all the time, um, completely something for 30 or more feet, the only route to this new area. In May 2019, a wreck trip at um, Spring Var had found that the sump was lowered, but that the gold was pounding wet. Um, and the rigging that we had so confidently said, oh, yes, it's dry, it's out of the water. We were very careful about that. Uh, they got absolutely hosed. So we felt a little bit bad about that. But that's what you get for doing wreck trips, right? So in summer 2019, the main subway, the sump had receded enough for us to get through. Um, so Jason Delafield, Kyle Daniel, Elliot Stahl, and I went back to this area. Um, we rigged and surveyed kind of a scary side pit uh, with a lot of breakdown and bad rock. We rigged a pit parallel to the gold, which is about 100 feet, um, tentatively named the silver. And we re-identified a dig at the end of this upstream passage, which previously had been marked um, as, as not really being a very good lead, but we went to look at it again and found that it was actually, seemed to be quite a viable dig. But we hadn't brought digging tools, only rigging tools, because we were planning on doing these pit leads. So we dug in this stream passage uh, with rocks and our hands and a digging and a bolting hammer for about four hours. Um, we were all super, super motivated to get through this dig um, and only Kyle Daniel, who was smaller than the rest of us, was able to. All three of the rest of us tried really hard to fit through and got ourselves stuck and bruised ourselves, bruised our ribs, um, scared the crap out of ourselves, honestly. Um, and the only way that Kyle was able to fit through was he took his pants off. Uh, so we named the dig um, Digger and a Show. The next trip Philip led with Jason and a whole bunch of other VPI cavers. Um, with better tools, was able to break through that dig. Um, Philip surveyed about 300 feet of phreatic maze on subsequent trips with a whole bunch of other VPI cavers. And the current frontier of that new section is very close to Buddy Penley's. Here's um, a cave wear of the new area. So this right hand one um, at the end this is a bigger room and then there's a long stream crawl going off of this. That lower part is the bottom of the gold. Could use some floor detail. <laughs> That's on me. Here's a rotation, um, thanks to Eric Hahn for this, of the new data. And I'm trying to figure out how to pause it. Let me show you that one more time. You can see as it goes under here, the two fingers reaching out in the middle. Um, those are the, the Newberry survey and buddies right here and here. So then we had some more problems after that breakthrough. Um, all trips since have been thwarted by the return of the perched sump much to our frustration. Um, so our new priority is to work on the area of Buddy Penley's 
that is closest to this new area of new berries. Um, and if anybody has any good pumps or some advice about sumps or some enthusiastic diggers in mud, uh, please send them our way. You are welcome to apply. Uh, we would love to have some answers about how to deal with this problem. The cave is only open from April through October because it's about hibernaculum. So uh, the fact that it now seems to have a sump in it much of the year is kind of messing with our ability to work towards this connection. Um, but I mean, what are you going to do? It's caving, cave stuff. Here's a bonus picture of Philip Allister allegedly going vertical caving. Here's some proof for those of you that might know Philip and his penchant for the horizontal. Um, there is some other information about this out there. I wrote a long article for the region record about all the different trips, um, kind of dramatizing the story. If you want to read more about that. So in conclusion, um, we've surveyed about 1600 feet over seven trips. The survey is 140 feet deep, but no depth has been added to the cave. The bottom of the gold is in the same layer as the Newberry stump, we think, but uh, it's just a little bit higher. Um, and we obviously, one of the cool things about the new area is that big pit. Um, it's always kind of exciting to add something large and vertical to a famous vertical cave. Um, so we would like to thank Joe and Carol Zokaitis for the lead and the Newberry Baines map. Um, Jake Lieber for being both very skillful and unannoying in the cave photography process. Um, and then we, Philip and I would also like to thank Lee White um, for passing me a bobbin that one time I might have died without one and for years of great caving and friendship. That's all I have to say about Newberries. Um, if you have any questions about this, you can find me on Facebook or email me at riley.s.blackwell at gmail.com. Um, I'd love to talk about Newberries um, and I hope that everybody's surveys go well. <laughs>